All right, moving right along into surface area of cones. We're trying to find how much stuff you can sort of wrap around this cone, right? And we're talking this stuff that wraps around and adding that to the circle that's on top. All right, so if we think about that, right, this is the area of a circle which means that this must be the area of the lateral the lateral section, the lateral surface area. All right, so this is the circle on top, and this represents the lateral surface area. It's important to know how those, how the formula breaks down because when we get to a composite surface area, sometimes we'll have you know, like a cylinder or something, and we'll put a cone on top, and we'll have to figure out the total surface area, in which case we'll have to delete the circle because it's not on the surface anymore. All right, so another thing that you want to look at here is this new, this new uh, dimension here. This is called the slant height. That's going up the diagonal section, the diagonal piece of our cone. And we're going to use a lowercase l for that. That's the slant height. And you can probably see that sometimes we're going to have to use Pythagorean theorem here. All right, we've got ourselves a right triangle. So depending on what we're given, we might have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Number one, write the formula down. It's the circle plus the lateral surface area. So we have radius already that's given to us that's 11 11 and the, la the uh, slant height the slant height is given as well in this case the problem is very very simple everything's given to us so we go right to our uh, you can go right to your calculators 121 pi plus you know whatever the heck that is I'll just type it on all into my calculator at once <clears throat> so we get, let's see, about 1230, a little more than 1230, 248 feet squared. So that would be the total surface area of this cone. Moving on. All right, and this cone, it's sort of laying down on its side, but as long as you keep the radius straight, then you should be fine. In this case, the radius is is not given to us. They're giving us the diameter. The diameter is two, which means the radius is half of that. And the slant height is also given to us. So we go surface area is equal to pi times the radius squared plus pi times 1 times 9.1 so this is let's see pi times 1 plus 9.1 pi so this is 1 plus 9.1 that's 10.1 pi now some some tests or something might ask you to actually just keep it in that form in pi form but let's go ahead and multiply it out we get 31.73 square kilometers. Number three. So in this case, we are given the height, which is kind of a pain because now we have to find the slant height. To find the slant height, we use Pythagorean theorem. This is a right cone. So we're going to say that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right, you can hopefully see that then there's a nice little cross section here and the cross section is a right triangle so we can use Pythagorean theorem 5 squared plus 12 squared equals let's call it L squared 25 and 144 that's 169 so L is equal to 13 inches so we have to do a little bit of work here radius is 5 slant height is 13 so again we go 
you can go to your calculators and you can get yourself an answer. 282.743 square inches. Number four. Number four, we are again given the height and we're not even given the, the radius, we are, we are given the diameter. So our radius, first of all, is half of the diameter. The radius is half of the diameter. We'll put that in a little different color here. So the radius is 10, the height is 29, the slant height we don't know. This is a right triangle, so we can use our Pythagorean theorem. We have 10 squared plus 29 squared equals slant height squared. So all we want to do is figure out that hypotenuse and it comes out to be a decimal, 30.676. That's the slant height. The radius, as we said, is 10. And you're good to go. Put that all into your calculator and see what you get. I get surface area is equal to 12, 77.866. Okay, so that one's a little bit more challenging because the diameter was the thing that's given, right? Whenever you see that, whenever you see that there's a uh, there's an arrow and it's pointing to the whole line here, that's the diameter of the, of the cone. So you have to cut that in half for the radius. That's where we got 10 from. Be careful not to use 20 there. All right, because our right triangle, if we were to draw it separately, is 10, 29, and L. All right, that pretty much takes care of the cone lesson. Next up, we're going to do uh, cylinders and then get into pyramids and spheres.